Praised be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This month of August is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I would like to give a brief reflection on the intimate union between the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. We must understand that devotion to the sacred heart goes hand in hand with devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque used to say to her novices, the most efficacious way to obtain devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus is through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. One of the greatest apostles of devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary is St. John Eudes. In one of his writings, he says, Jesus and Mary are so closely connected that he who sees Jesus sees Mary, and he who loves Jesus loves Mary. He who has devotion to Jesus has devotion to Mary. Jesus and Mary are the two chief foundations of the Christian religion, the two sources of all our blessings, the two subjects of our devotions, and the two to whom we must look in all our actions and devotions. The sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary are in reality one heart, joined together by most perfect union and conformity of will and intellect. In the mind of God, the two hearts cannot be separated. Pope Pius IX speaks of the joint predestination of Jesus and Mary in one and the same decree. What this means is that when God decided that his son would take up human nature, in that very same moment, he specifically chose Mary to be his mother and bestowed on her the gift of the fullness of grace. Therefore, just as Mary and Joseph are inseparable in the mind of God and in his divine plan of salvation, so also they must remain inseparable in our devotion. St. John Eudes also proposes that we ought to honor Jesus in Mary and Mary in Jesus. These are his words. You must see and adore her son in her and see and adore him alone. It is thus that she wishes to be honored because of herself and by herself she is nothing. But her son Jesus is everything in her her being, her life, her sanctity, her glory, her power, and her greatness. And in fact, this is the reason why we Christians honor Mary. It is because of Jesus. When we venerate the heart of Mary, what we are in fact doing is giving worship to Jesus himself. The venerable Fulton Shin relates the story of a Catholic boy from a parochial school who was telling a university professor who lived next door about the Blessed Virgin Mary. The professor made fun at the boy saying, but there is no difference between Mary and my mother. The boy answered, that's what you say, but there is a heck of a lot of difference between the sons. Fulton Shin made this statement. The key to understanding Mary is this. We do not start with Mary. We start with Christ, the Son of the living God. A third thing we learn from St. John Eudes is that we ought to imitate Mary, we ought to imitate Jesus in the practice of devotion to Mary. He says, as you must continue the virtues of Jesus and keep with you his sentiments, so also you must continue and maintain in your hearts the love, tenderness, 
and devotion that Jesus cherished for his blessed mother. He loved her most perfectly and accorded her the very highest honor in choosing her to be his mother, giving himself to her as a most beloved son, taking from her a new being and life, becoming subject to her, following her guidance in outward things during his childhood and hidden life, afterwards crowning her queen of heaven and earth, glorifying her and causing her to be glorified by the whole world. So Christ was perfectly free to choose his own mother from among all the infinite number of women. But once he chose his mother, he contracted certain obligations towards that woman. He owed to Mary all those honors which were possible for him to bestow on any creature and which were appropriate to his own mother. So, if it was possible for Christ to give the highest degree of grace and glory to his own mother, and he did not do it, then his filial homage as son to his mother would not have been perfect. I will repeat that again. If it was possible for Christ to honor his mother in the most perfect way possible, and he did not do that, then as a son, he would have been lacking you know, in the respect and homage that he had to give to Mary, his mother. But that is impossible because Christ is incapable of any imperfection. This then means that Christ bestowed on Mary the highest dignity possible to any creature besides himself. For this reason, Saint Maximilian encourages us to be devoted to Mary, saying that we should not be afraid of loving Our Lady too much, the reason being that we will never come to love and honor her as much as Jesus did. Among all the saints and angels in heaven, Mary holds a special place. When the archangel Gabriel appeared to Mary, his first, his first words were, Hail, full of grace. Because of her divine maternity, Mary is the person closest to Christ. It is impossible to separate Mary from Christ. According to Pope Pius XII, in the work of human redemption, it was God's will that the Blessed Virgin Mary be inseparably linked with Christ in such a manner that in the same way that our salvation sprang from the love and the sufferings of Jesus Christ, and at the same time, they spring from the love and sorrows of his mother. The same Pope also said, it is entirely fitting that the Christian people who receive the divine life from Christ through Mary, after they have paid their debt of honor to the sacred heart of Jesus, should also offer to the most loving heart of their heavenly mother the corresponding acts of piety, affection, gratitude, and expiation. Before dying, Jacinta said to Lucia, tell everybody that God grants us graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, that people should ask her for them, and that the Heart of Jesus wants the Immaculate Heart of Mary to be honored along with his. Tell them to pray to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for peace because God has entrusted it to her. If I could put into everybody's heart the flame that burns in my chest, now if I could only put into everybody's heart the flame that burns in my chest, making me love the hearts of Jesus and Mary so much. Devotion to the heart of Mary is the most efficacious means at arriving 
a devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus because she alone loves this heart as no one else has loved or will ever love it. And she alone longs for nothing so much as to see it loved by all. Let us ask the Immaculate Heart to teach us how to truly love and worship the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit,